welcome to this Astranti bite size video and in today's bite size video we're looking at a topic that's actually really relevant for both students of E1 and E3. Now in this video I'm going to apply the topic cloud computing towards the finance function which is definitely more appropriate for E1 but this video can really be used as a base for those of you studying for E3 because we're talking about the advantages and the disadvantages of this technology and what you'll be tested on E3 is how you can then apply this technology to a business scenario. So without further ado let's find out everything that you need to know about cloud computing for E1 and E3. Now we're going to start cloud computing just like we've started with the other sections and ask what it is. But I'd imagine out of all the technologies, cloud computing is probably the one that all of you are most familiar with and probably a lot of you already use. And that's because cloud computing can include things such as storing photos on the cloud when your phone may have reached its storage limit or perhaps you've accessed a work document from home at the weekend that maybe you didn't have a time to get to in the week. Now cloud technology is a method of storing and accessing files remotely over the internet. Now financial records, programs, images, information and more can all be stored in a virtual location which is the cloud. And then once they're in a cloud, they can be made accessible to any chosen user, as long as those chosen users have internet connection. Now, users can then remotely log in from any location and access the information stored on the server, just as though it was stored on their own device. Now online software can also allow for team working with staff members easily able to share work or even people working on the same work at the same time using software such as Google Docs. Now there are two types of cloud computing depending on who owns the server or cloud where the files are stored. Now many companies specialize in providing public clouds which anyone including businesses can sign up to use so examples of these would be Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform even large businesses may choose to use a public cloud for example Netflix uses Amazon Web Services for its computing and storage alternatively an organization can have its own private cloud which is the second type of cloud computing and this has its own personal virtual servers and internal management so for example Facebook and Instagram both share their own private cloud so let's have a look now at cloud computing and the finance function because cloud technology is changing the way organizations and individuals carry out computing and access information in the finance function. With financial personnel able to access their work almost anywhere, anytime, set working hours and a physical team are becoming less important. So as to look at the benefits and risks of using cloud computing with the finance function, we're going to have a look at how Netflix has used cloud computing to become one of the main film and TV streaming services in the world. When Netflix first started in 1997, customers rented DVDs. Can you imagine renting a DVD anymore from Netflix by mail? And it wasn't until 10 years later that Netflix started offering streaming of content online. Now initially all of their information relating to their streaming services was housed on servers in data centers on their premises. But as the company expanded, Netflix migrated to using Amazon's public cloud service, AWS. Although technically the video content itself is stored somewhere else, it's quite complicated this process, all the information about the content, how it's organized and the user preferences, pardon me, is stored on the public cloud. So let's take a look now at how this shift impacted on Netflix and apply the same benefits to the finance function. And the first benefit we're gonna look at is accessibility. Now cloud computing, as we've already touched on, means that information can be accessed anywhere there is internet connection. Now this is one of the key selling points of Netflix. The fact that its customers have thousands of films and TV series at their fingertips anywhere, 
any time of the day. Now in terms of the finance function, which is what we are most interested in and what will come up in your exam, when Netflix moved into cloud computing, it reduced the need for employees in the finance function to be in the same physical location. Employees could now access and undertake their work from any location at any time using shared files and online processes. Okay, the next benefit is backup. So cloud service providers such as Dropbox understand the importance of keeping backups of their clients' data and often provide the opportunity to restore old files should they be incorrectly deleted. Okay, the next benefit is integration. Now cloud technology providers such as Amazon's web services often provide lots of different types of software which will link together. So for example, AWS provided e-commerce software which allow buying and selling over the internet as well as software for reporting and analytics. Now integrated financial software can allow for all elements of software to be on one system ensuring a more integrated approach to finance. Now this allows for better collaboration between different areas of the finance function. So for example those involved in financial accounting and those involved in treasury management can share the same financial information on linked systems. The next benefit is real time co working. We've touched co working, pardon me. We've touched on this already, and it's the fact that employees can work on the same task at the same time. So, for example, using Google Sheets, multiple finance staff would be able to work on a spreadsheet at the same time, which allows for efficient use of time and collaborative working. Now, online financial systems can typically be used by many people at once, and yes, there was a time in the past where only one person could work in a company's financial system at any one time. So you can see how far things have changed. The next benefit is there is greater memory to store and share data. So fourth industrial revolution technology is resulting in huge amounts of data being generated and this needs to be stored somewhere. Cloud computing allows large amounts of information to be stored and because this is online, unlike on a piece of company owned hardware, there's no definitive upper limit on storage size. Finance departments therefore do not have to be concerned about maximum storage requirements for the systems they are using. So Netflix was limited by the number of servers in their data centers and as they continue to expand are beginning to struggle to cope with the increasing volumes of information from users. Switching to cloud computing meant this was no longer an issue. So there we go, there's the benefits for the finance function, but uh-oh, there are some challenges too. So let's bring up the challenges, and the first is the difficulties in financial reporting and business valuations. Now, cloud computing changed the importance of different types of assets in the finance function. Physical assets of a business, such as property or equipment, are becoming less important, and intangible assets, such as staff, skills, and intellectual property, are becoming more important. However, intangible assets are more difficult to give a value to, which makes valuing them for financial reporting purposes much more difficult. This also makes valuing the business as a whole more difficult than for asset based companies. Okay, the next challenge as you can see is security breaches. So if the provider of the technology is targeted by hackers, stored information is going to be compromised. Netflix has millions of paying customers which makes them a target to hackers. If security of the AWS cloud provider was breached, then their customers data could be stolen as well as their own financial data. And we can see here how vulnerable this would make a company which could cause reputational damage to the company. Uh, the, well, the third possible challenge is the heavy reliance on the provider. Because public clouds are an outsourced product, the provider is trusted to provide a huge quality service that meets all of their clients' needs. Netflix, for example, relies heavily on AWS for good service and support because a large amount of important information, which is critical for Netflix's operation, is stored on their server. Now, this is going to be the case for online information related 
relating to the finance function as well. And it would be critical that the public cloud is functioning in order for the finance function to run its operations. So there we go. I'm sorry, let me just bring up that on screen for you. And I'll pause on it just in case you want to make notes. Sorry for bringing that up so late. Of course, you can always pause it as well. My apologies. So let's zoom out to cloud computing. There we go. There's the benefits and the challenges. Okay, so that's everything you're going to need to know about cloud computing for your E1 and your E3 exams. But if you want to find out more about more topics for both of those syllabuses, be sure to check out our materials. Now, if you're getting close to taking your exams, what I really recommend is you check out our EPK kits or exam practice kits or our practice mock exams so you can test yourself with exam like questions to make sure that you really understand the material before you go into exams. Thanks so much. Please remember to like this video or subscribe to our channel if you want more of these Astranti bite sized videos.